everybody and welcome back to the Traction Channel for another brand new video and of course for the latest episode in my brand new series where I try the latest and greatest that racing games have to offer. And this time I'm not playing a game that's been recently updated or any new DLC or anything like that, I'm actually playing one of the newest racing games in existence, which is MotoGP 22. Now it's been a very long time for me since I've played a proper MotoGP game, I think MotoGP 15 was the last one I actually put many hours into, so I am going to be very very rusty indeed when it comes to this game, which is exactly why we have the likes of our chief editor Tom and also Robbo46 writing some incredible articles for the Traction Channel for this game. If you want to find out more about MotoGP 22, head over to the website and read the articles by those guys, not by me. What we do have on the YouTube channel is the video version of the review and that starts off by talking about a brand new story based feature mode called 9 and that is what I'm going to be jumping into today, so let's fire on with it. So this 9 season 2009 mode is a story mode about Valentino Rossi's 9th championship, not his 9th MotoGP championship, he won 7 of those, uh, he also won a 125cc and a 250cc championship, so his 9th championship overall and it was also in 2009, hence why probably it's called 9. But I am very excited because unlike Breaking Point, unlike Grid Legends Driven to Glory, this story mode is based in reality. It's not a fictional story where you're creating something new with fictional characters. This is real people. It's almost like a documentary style thing. And that looked amazing because 2009 was right about the era where I was most into my MotoGP, getting up really early in the morning to watch the 125s and the 250s just before it became Moto3, Moto2, etc. Um, yeah, my motorsport passion. This for me is the golden era of MotoGP on a personal level. So I'm excited and I think this game mode alone is enough for me to want to play MotoGP 22, unlike the previous MotoGP games, which have been really good and it looks like Milestone have been doing a great job with them. Kind of like the Codemasters F1 games, they just keep getting updated every year. Um, nothing too incredible between each one, but this game mode changes it for me. This really does make me want to come on and play it. And that's what I'm going to be doing today, which is so great. So we're going to jump in here. I'm guessing we're going to go straight into a cutscene. Milestone, of course, making so many bike games every single year, and even Hot Wheels Unleashed, so they're making car games as well. There he is. 2001. Two. Three. Four. He did win a lot five. in a row when he first started out. Five world championships in a row. Three with Honda. Then the move to Yamaha and two more. Proving that the rider, not the bike, makes the difference. Proving perhaps that Valentino Rossi is the greatest motorcycle racer of all time. But then, 2006. Machine problems. Human errors and injuries. While Nicky Hayden is on a roll, racking up victories, podiums and points, taking the contest all the way to the final race in Valencia. Nicky Hayden, that's a sad story how that's all turned out. But he was incredible 2006. The, end, the Kentucky kid seizes the crown as Rossi slips and falls. That was such a dramatic end to the season as well because Hayden had fallen off the round before. Um, after Lisa. crashing with his teammate Pedroza, it was very, very dramatic well, indeed. What is it that racers say about second place? And now they're on him, the new breed. Younger, hungrier, faster. Casey Stoner as well. Like never before. Casey Stoner, the fastest rider Rossi's ever encountered. He wins 10 races in 2007. Rossi, just four. A new low for the Italian. A stunning triumph for the Australian. Casey Stoner's a bit Spain's like Juan Pablo Montoya or Mika Hakkinen. Not around for too long at the top place, level, but incredibly Valentino gifted. Rossi. Third and hurt. Three broken bones in his hand after a vicious crash in practice for the final race caused by a machine problem. He makes it to the start in Valencia, but not to the finish. Another machine problem. Adding insult to injury, Yamaha signs Jorge Lorenzo as their second rider for 2008. For the future, in other words. Now the enemy is in the building. <laughs> Lorenzo arrives in the Yamaha garage to find that Rossi's had a wall built down the middle of it to shut out his so-called teammate. But he can't build a wall on the track. Lorenzo takes pole at his first MotoGP race in Qatar. 
easy. He's on the podium at the second race in Spain and wins the third in Portugal. Easy. And then he crashes. And crashes. And crashes. And puts himself in hospital. But Casey Stoner is still there. After some teething trouble with the 2008 Ducati, the reigning world champion is going faster than ever. A three-win blitz in mid-season, blocking Rossi's title charge. Time to fight back. Laguna Seca. A duel in the California sun. As close to a fist fight as you can get on a motorcycle. Some of the passing maneuvers were maybe a little bit too much and past the point of fair or aggressive. We make a lot of overtaking, uh, quite aggressive, but uh, we never touch each other. My style to race is try to never give up. Anyway, I enjoy the battle. Stoner and his team don't like it, but everybody else does. The Australian falters. Two crashes at Bruno and Mizano. And worse, a wrist injury. Rossi is relentless. He wins six of the remaining eight races. Stoner, two. The Italian is king again and making history. Only one rider, that other Italian god, Giacomo Agostini, has ever recaptured the crown after losing it two years in a row. Agostini managed it once in 1975, but he finished seventh the following season and retired the year after that. In 2009, Valentino Rossi sets out to win it again. A new record in his sights and no thoughts of retirement in his head. There are only three problems. <laughs> Jorge Lorenzo, Casey Stoner, and Danny Pedrosa. Three very big problems indeed. That is epic. So that is a full intro montage telling you all about the history, the championship the year before. And this, as I say, this is when I was watching the sport, so I remember all of these things. And it was phenomenal. So that's properly got the blood pumping. Time to go racing, and Casey Stoner is ready. He had an operation to fix his wrist in November. He's on an all-new Ducati. He was fastest at the pre-season test in March. And now he's qualified half a second clear of Rossi. I think we're going to get dropped into the Qatar Grand Prix here, based on what I've seen. But he does have one worry. This year, the fuel allowance for the race has been cut by one litre. Ducati are not totally sure that their bike will make the distance. Stoner makes a lightning start, then improvises economy mode. Beginning the race, I was trying to run more corner speed and, and keep the bike flowing in a higher gear so we, we didn't use so much fuel. With 10 laps to go, Stoner is two seconds ahead of Rossi. We know that Stoner is very fast from the beginning. For one part of the race, I was able to, to go like him, but not for all the race distance. What Rossi doesn't know is that Stoner has been riding conservatively. With seven laps to go and fuel enough in the tank, the Australian shows Rossi what he can do. Okay, here we go. Episode one, unstoppable, Rossi's unreachable. Seven laps to go. Time to shake him off. Okay, so I'm going to be riding as Casey Stoner, I think, not Valentino Rossi. Seconds. Let's do it. Okay, I've got to hang on to this lead in Qatar. 1.7 seconds at the moment. I've got no other bikes as reference here, and I don't really know Qatar that well. It's been ages since I've ridden around here, so... This could be a difficult first attempt, let's put it that way. There's an example of that straight away. 
And there goes Rossi. So it's definitely going to take me a little bit of time to get into this. I've got a few assists on as well, braking assists, stuff like that, just to try and help keep me on the bike because this is my first time playing the game and I am kind of throwing myself in the deep end here so don't expect to see some incredible MotoGP 22 gameplay here. I just more want to show you just how cool this story looks. I am off the road again. This is a bad start. Okay, crossing the line for the first time. I am 6.1 seconds behind Rossi. I started off two seconds ahead, so I've lost about eight seconds and half a lap. This doesn't feel quite like the right difficulty level for me right now. <laughs> a young Lorenzo's gotten through as well. That's me down to P3. Okay, we're certainly going to make some adjustments here if possible. I don't even know what settings are on in terms of difficulty and stuff like that, but uh, it's not the <laughs> it's not the easiest to jump in and instantly be competitive here. And we're down. Uh, uh, to be fair, I did almost a full lap before I actually crashed, so that's that's something. Okay, I've discovered why it was so difficult. The AI difficulty was defaulting to hard, 80%. Um, for, for car racing games, that should be okay for me. Normally I'd be on 100% or so. For this kind of game, we're going to take it down a little bit. Yeah, something... We could try 60%. How about we go with that? Okay, attempt number two. We're taking the difficulty from hard down to advanced. Now, this should make it a slightly more level playing field, hopefully. Got a 1.4 second gap to Rossi. I've actually got to stretch that gap out before the end of this race. Hopefully after the first few laps I'll begin to remember this Qatar layout. So we should see the lap times improve. That was rubbish. Missed the apex by a mile and Rossi's right on the back of me. Come on. Oh no. Missed the corner by a mile. There he is. Get a good exit though. Bit of contact. A bit of Laguna Seca in there. But we're back into the lead. I've got to say, I'm only on lap one right now. But I already love the idea of this story mode more than Grid Legends and, and uh, Formula 1 21. Simply because when a story is grounded in reality, and it's like a documentary style, it actually, you know, it gets the blood flowing in a different way. I don't know, maybe it's because I watched MotoGP in this era, maybe it wouldn't be the same if not. I think it would be, to be honest. I don't know, it just feels so much easier to get emotionally invested in it when you know it's real and it's not trying to create something that, something that's not true, you know, a narrative based on cliches and general kind of, you know, things you'd expect from motorsport stories to make them extra dramatic. My words are getting away from me there because I'm struggling to keep Rossi at bay. There he goes again. Come on. Oh, no, that's, no, bad. Get back on. Oh, Rossi's run wide. I'm not giving up on this yet because I know that my riding is going to drastically improve over these few laps. It's not as if I'm going to stay at the same level. I say that. <laughs> there was a corner there somewhere. I must say I also really like the fact that you're not just playing as Rossi. You know, we've jumped in here. I was kind of expecting to be Rossi chasing down Stoner running low on fuel. But actually, you know, we've jumped in as Stoner. So clearly throughout this career mode is we're going to take the lead again, are we? Not quite. Clearly you're going to get to play as many of the main people in the championship, you know, Rossi, Pedroza, Lorenzo, hopefully some of the smaller satellite teams as well. Hopefully Randy Depunier, he was my favourite. Oh, well, we're side by side, Rossi's back in the lead. It's actually been quite a good battle. But the thing is, I need to not only win the race, but also build up a gap myself, which is tricky. And I'm just not getting the angles right at all through the corners at the moment. Under breaking into turn one. Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry, Rossi. I did not mean to do that. We'll try that again, shall we? Bumped him straight off his bike. Oh, you really need to brake early in this. That is something I have, I have, you know, heard about this game. The braking, you do need to brake a lot earlier than you might have in previous MotoGP games. Oh, I'm sorry again. Bit more contact. Oh, I'm down. I've probably taken him with me. We'll do another rewind. Now I do wonder, if I get one objective, aka I beat him, but not by five seconds, if that will move us on to the next chapter, or do I need to get both objectives? So that's what we're going to find out, probably, if I win this race, even, on this attempt. Into the final corner. I need to break earlier than the, the indicator there, because I've missed the corner so many times. 
managed to take the win still, so let's see if that is enough to advance us to the next chapter. Okay, it looks like we're straight on to episode 2, so you only need to pass one of the objectives to get through. I'm sure I can go back and complete those later. We're still in Qatar. I believe there's two episodes per circuit in the season, so we should see two for each track as we move forward. Oh. I am Rossi. I've got to finish second in front of Caparossi and Lorenzo. That is appalling as I was reading the objectives. And distance third place by at least one second. That's the thing we don't need to do. Got Davizioso in front of us on a Repsol Honda. Obviously Davizioso, this was, I think this might have been his second season, maybe even first season in the sport. Nicky Hayden had gone to Ducati at this point, so he'd come in and take, taken his position at Honda alongside Pedroza. That's P4. Obviously Rossi, it's insane that he only retired last year. And I think it's kind of fitting that this is the game that has this championship mode in it, because this is also the first official MotoGP game for, for forever, for ages, that doesn't have Valentino Rossi as part of the roster in the current season. So it's great that, because we miss Rossi from the main game, but look, we've got an entire game mode dedicated to him. And I'm loving the style of it already. I mean, I need to improve my writing, obviously, and the gameplay itself. But in terms of the actual idea behind the story mode and the, the cutscenes and stuff so far, I've just fallen off my bike. I'm loving it. I'm loving everything about it. It's so tricky to, to kind of, you know, especially when you've got two corners the same direction in a row on a MotoGP bike trying to control the lean and balance yourself in the right way. It's not easy at all. We're going to drive past our big rival Lorenzo, give him no room at all, past Loris Caparossi as well on the Suzuki. And into P2, right. Can we actually get first from Casey Stoner? We've got, I think we're on the final lap actually of the challenge. Oh, I've missed my breaking point. Just get away with it. The assist's helping me hugely there. I've crashed into the back of Stoner. Oh, bit more contact. This is the bit that's tricky. It's the, trying to get the transfer at the right time. Uh, it's not it's not as terrible as it has been previously. Oh, hello. Go for another undercut. Get the power down. Out right, of the final corner. We need to distance third place by at least a second. We've just about done that. We're actually in first place. And that's going to complete Qatar. First round of the season. Pretty good. Okay, we move on to episode three. We've got another story here. So this is telling us, presumably, what happened Lorenzo in Qatar in reality. To fifth behind Caparossi and Davizioso. He knows he can go faster. It's a confidence thing. Under new rules, the bikes are now all on Bridgestone tires. Rossi and Stoner were already on Bridgestone in 2008, but Lorenzo was on Michelin. The Spaniard is still getting used to the Bridgestones. They behave a little differently at the limit, and it's a knife edge where the rubber meets the road. He's going to fall down, isn't he? Stoner and Valentino, they are a little bit stronger than us. They are uh, more experienced with, uh, with the Bridgestone tyre, and we are uh, still uh, improving. But now's no time to play it safe. Fifth place is not OK. Oh, do we actually have another? We do, we've got another this is episode at Qatar. Happen. Fourth on lap two, fifth on lap three. Get past Caparossi and Davizioso. You need that podium. Okay, I need to get back onto the podium. Oh, more contact. So presumably, Stoner won the race, Rossi came second, and Lorenzo managed to get back up to P3, because that's what we're trying to do now, and this is trying to replicate what happened in reality. Just to reiterate, if you've come here, by the way, to hear a bit about how this gameplay compares to MotoGP 21 and some techniques to get the most out of it, as you've probably already realised, you are in the wrong place. This is not what this is going to be about. But what I can say is whether you're a MotoGP game fan or not, if you're a fan of the sport in general and have passion for it and want to know a bit more about the history or want to relive these moments, the game mode looks to be providing that excellently. And you need to turn to Robo46 or... Uh, Tom for more for more detailed information about the gameplay itself because I, I can't possibly comment but what I can say is I'm beginning to get slightly used to it now with the assists I've got on which are quite a few of them it feels pretty good like I'm, I'm definitely beginning to get better I'm still a long way off in terms of technique we're on the outside of Rossi got the cut back to the inside oh no no that's horrible nice move on Rossi we're definitely getting better at achieving our objectives now than we were right at the start. One thing I will say is they've been quite clever with the way they've done the story. Having to pass these objectives, which match what happens in real life, 
it's very easy for the story to be linear but still feel challenging and still feel like your result matters because you do have to pass the objective to get through but in doing so it will match what happened in the real season and because you've got all the documentary style things showing you exactly what happened it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like what you do is unrealistic or it's not going to match the story at all you know and I like that I'm going to try and get back past Rossi triangle inside tried not to make contact and it actually kind of worked didn't fall off either that's a that's a new one for me Look at that, I actually hit a braking zone, hit an apex, and did it properly. That thing I was saying just a minute ago about the objectives and it being realistic, well, what if Jorge Lorenzo actually won the opening round at La Salle? Episode 3 completed, the night is not over. I wonder if it's over now though, because it's beginning to get to the point where I kind of want to move on to the next circuit and see what's going. Saying that, if you get many episodes per track, at least the career mode's got some sort of decent longevity. Okay, looks like we are moving on to the next round. There's your final result. What happened to Danny Pedrosa in Qatar? He qualified 14th and finished 11th. In Japan, he qualifies 11th. What happened? Pedrosa was racing injured in the second half of 2008. When he crashed out of the lead in Germany in July, he broke several bones in his hands and wrists. Ow. He crashed again in Australia in October a knee injury which required surgery in the winter. By March and the pre-season test in Qatar, he was almost back to full fitness. Then he crashed heavily and re-injured the knee which had just been repaired. I always feel for Pedroza, he never reached the potential he could have with his talent, he was always picking up injuries. I need more laps. Pedrosa ruled the world in the smaller categories but he's fast becoming MotoGP's chronically wounded warrior. Maybe the big bikes are a step too far for the diminutive Spaniard. He's by far the smallest rider in the Premier class. Some say this gives him an advantage. Because he's lighter, he can accelerate faster. But really it's a disadvantage. Taller riders with longer arms and legs can muscle the MotoGP machines around more easily. I'm loving the backstory. It's really cool. You get an insight into things. The narration is very clear, are still a step ahead of and it tells the story Stoner's in a simple way. Time is just five hundredths of a second slower than Rossi's. Lorenzo is half a second down. Then he makes a bad start. The pressure's on. Uh, I didn't do a very good start. I finished uh, the first lap in fourth. I had to ride as best as I can to get the victory. Okay, so it looks like Twinrin Motegi. Japan, home to Yamaha. Okay. Home to Bridgestone. Finish second as Jorge stage. Lorenzo. This is going to be the last episode I do in this race. in this particular video. There are three riders between you and the top step of the podium. Time to attack. Now this is a track I know well, unlike Qatar. So there's my excuses gone. If I'm terrible, it's just because I'm terrible. And I'm already going to make a mistake here in the first corner. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, we'll try that one again, shall we? This time I'm going to break where the game recommends I do. You've got Danny Petrosa up in third. Christopher Mullen up in second. I have missed the corner again. Stayed on my bike thanks to the assist. But yeah, Vermeulen up in the Suzuki. He was another very talented rider that never quite reached his potential, I would say. This was definitely heading towards the end of his MotoGP career. I am heading towards the end of mine before it's even started. So our objective here, finish in second place, perform at least one pass per lap as well. So I really need to get past Danny before the start-finish line. All right, we'll try and get Pedroza in to the hairpin. I'm braking really early because it's so easy to overshoot. Try and get a good exit. Yeah, he's run a bit deep. There we go, he's on the gravel. Come on, right. We've got Pedroza. We've got to stay ahead of him through this last section now. We'll stay on the outside, we'll cut back across, change direction is the hardest bit for me. Didn't quite get it right, Pedroza's back through. No, we're not going to get him, are we? Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I can't tell. I think we got him. That Suzuki is beautiful, I'm so glad Suzuki are back in the sport. Saying that, 
they're leaving again, which is it's sad, you know. Oh, too deep into the hairpin, just getting it stopped. Get a good exit though. We'll hopefully get a pass for Mulan down into the next hairpin. I'm actually enjoying the races. And I think it helps because I'm not great at it yet and I'm still learning things. There's a lot of changes, a lot of changes of position. I can afford to make mistakes and come back through, like that, for example. So I am actually really enjoying the learning process and trying to be more smooth with things. Over the line, it's going to be P2. Do a bit of a wheelie. Did I actually stay ahead of Remulin? Do you know what? Did I? No, I did. Okay. I thought I lost position <laughs> to Chris Remulin over the line. But that's his past that episode. So for the next part, an act of will, duel with Rossi and finish in first place. So you're playing Lorenzo again and this is presumably where you fight for the win. But I'm not going to do this part in this video because I feel like I've shown you enough and I don't want to give you any more spoilers for this game mode. So I'm going to wrap things up there. But thank you very much as always for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of insight into the nine story mode in MotoGP 22. I'm certainly enjoying it so far. I've got a long way to go in terms of the gameplay itself. But... I am definitely wanting to replay the story mode. I'm going to try and not read up on the 2009 season because I've kind of forgotten the details of what happened in each race. So I will, uh, I will enjoy playing through it and learning it as I go. But yeah, as I say, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go on the gravel. Make sure you subscribe to the Traction Channel for better motorbike racing content than I'm creating right now. Uh, and also for all sorts of other racing game content because there will be plenty on the channel in the near future. And hit the notification bell if you want to see all of these new videos as they are released. Until I see you next time, thank you so much for watching, keep it pinned, and have a great day. Bye Pedroza. Oh, I'm off. <laughs>